Hello and welcome to this week's Spirit of Blues and today we face Ultima, a team we're very familiar with. Obviously it's going to be Mickey Mellon's first game in the dugout at Boundary Park so hopefully we can give him a good applaud but hope, more importantly we put Tuesday's result aside and get back to winning ways. Hopefully Tuesday's game was nothing more than an unwanted blip. Obviously Ultima, a team we're very familiar with it's only a couple of weeks back that we beat them in the FA Cup, ending their eight-match unbeaten run. And since then, they've only played one game and drawn. I'm expecting a tough game today, so I'm expecting all them to come back, wanting to be make up amends for that result. But at the same time, I'm hoping that Mellon, having worked with them all this since Tuesday, has fired them up and we can come out and give that what we need most, which is a response, and which means going out there and getting ourselves a win. And pushing up that table and aiming for playoffs. Having seen the game the other night, I realistically accepted it's not going to be automatic promotion this year, to be fair. We probably did a while back, but finishing as high as we can in the playoffs, aiming for 4 4, 5th at least that way, or 5th or 6th, to get a home advantage of the first leg. Just getting in there is important, but the higher we climb, the easier. But obviously, we need to start making sure. We don't have repeat performances from Tuesday and we go at it. I expect it to be a fair decent crowd today. So Obviously I'll be back in the Rocky Roll then I won't be in the chatter because that's going to be where the away is. I'm also looking forward to being presented with a shirt from Oldham's Disability fan group today which I won recently. So anyway, um, let's go a little bit about Ultramon. Also, don't really need to go too much into Ultram's history because we've played them that many times, I've covered it in previous videos, but they are called Ultram and they play at Moss Lane, they're nicknamed the Robins. Phil Parkinson has done really well with them, he's established them into a decent outfit and at the moment probably exceeding people's expectations. They were actually the first ever winners of the National League when it was the Football Alliance winner the first two years in a row, but on many occasions missed out because of the re-election process that used to happen. They have won the FA Trophy twice as well. It's weird because since automatic promotion came in, they've not really had a sniff of um, being up there and they've had a couple of relegations. Obviously, we know they've got a couple of good players. Look out for Chris Conclark. He's one of Ocean's main players and he causes problems with week in recent FA Cup tie. They signed him from Fleetwood in the summer and a lot of them call him Lundstrom's replacement. Also look out for Sam Roscoe's not a bad lad as well. On his day over for Crank Shaw can cause problems and Regan Linney as well. Obviously they have got a big FA Cup history but we recently ended up. It won't go past the fourth qualifying round this season. On paper they are a decent team but as I say in this league anyone can beat anyone on their day. Obviously at home at Moss Lane they play real good and it's, they've made it a fortress over the recent years and that's why it was impressive when we got that win the other week. But I'm expecting them to come back at us, obviously. But we've got enough in us to beat them today. Can I have a prediction today off you? I'm going to go 3-1 Latix. Ben? 1-1. Uh, and you go yourself, good sir? I'm going to go for a grinding out 1-0 win. Brilliant. Thanks for the shirt, lads. No problem. I'm taking side boundary park today, um, obviously it's Ultram at home, we need to bounce back from the other night, the other night was disappointing, he's mixed and matched the team today, hopefully we'll see a better performance, Helen's first game in charge of boundary park, let's go for it, get back to winning ways, I'm not expecting an easy game, I'm expecting a bit, much better performance, a bit more attacking line, it looks like it's going out attacking line up, Holden's suspended so he's putting the game at the back, not always getting another one out, which shows to me he's looking at all options he's got, also, Willoughby's not on the bench, but anyway, come on, Oldham, let's get back to winning ways. Melbourne's first game at Boundary Park after three away games, it's good to be home. Let's have another win. How oh, at home? Come on, Oldham, let's win this. Three points, please. Oldham.
1-0 now on the first attack they've had and we should be 2-0 up by now. I'm losing two and I take it back. I've seen that it was a penalty, a handball, and then it's not a penalty. He needs to turn it around now. We can still win this. Come on, all the. To hold myself, then. Oh, oh fucking hell! Oh, oh, the score is. Good save. Offside, anyway.
So, the game itself today, well, neither team really deserved it, to be fair. A point against an organised team isn't a bad point, and Ultram are not the best team I've seen this year, but let's go back to last season, Good Friday. We were 2-0 up, and we threw a 2-0 lead against 10 men, and I left the ground fuming. I was absolutely annoyed not being able to kill them off today. I was pleased with Battle Back because throughout that second half, we did not look like scoring, in my opinion. I know I put that jokey tweet on about Michelle Keegan. But we battled. They were organised. It frustrated us. And they were happy to sit back at 2-1+. plus. Okay, hands up. It was a penalty. It didn't look at where I was sat. I was amazed that very few Ocean players were like, oh, no, we've got a penalty here. But... That was one of the worst refereeing performances of the season. I'm not going to, I don't like just singling out referees because in the day, it's down to the players on the pitch to score the goals, keep them out. But referees' decisions do influence them. And when they got that penalty, we were starting to take control of that game. But there was a lot of positives. It was good to see Freeman at right back, could see him making runs over up in the midfield. And he played a vital role in Norwood's goal as well. Obviously, I thought Hope had a good game. He was actually my man of the match, especially the second half. I think me, he's nailed on that starting spot now out wide. I think when Dickinson's fit, I can see him coming in on the left, replacing Green. I thought McGay played well, stepping in for Hobson. Again, he was very focal. You could hear him in the stands, but I still think he's better further up in midfield. I said no, took the first goal well. Sharon, what a strike for the second goal. I'm starting to lose patience now with Nuttall. I'm not trying to sing him out and I've stuck up for him on all these vlogs, but the more I'm watching him, he just doesn't look interested at times. He doesn't seem up for it. His first touch has let him down. I was actually glad to see him, the team to give him a go alongside Norwood. And it shows Mellon's looking at all his options. But for me, personally, if we were to get rid of his striker and the club were to cash in on him, I wouldn't be disappointed now. Going back to Norwood, that's seven goals now in 14 games. It's a goal per game. It's frustrating and annoying because there's times I've slated him, but his stats say he's scoring. I think as fans, we were hoping we'd see goals more constantly, maybe like two or three goals per game or so. If we say it was one of his better games, he could see he was shouting at the players. When we were celebrating Sharon's goal, he could see you saying, right, come on, lads, let's get for the winner. Let's go for it. So there is that mentality of him playing at a higher level What he's trying to shout to his teammates. And I think we're slowly seeing him now coming round and obviously he has played for Mellon before so obviously he knows what to expect of Mellon maybe we've just been a bit expecting too much from the time but I still think Norwood and Fondop could work together he can tell he reads the game well and he sees what's happening all around Hudson another good performance Hobson once again and he's going to be a player that's catching attention now of teams further up in the league Obviously, it wasn't the greatest game of football I've seen. And as I said, Oldsham are not, by far, not the best team I've seen this year. But Parkinson's gotten set up well. And I think, if you ask them now, both teams will probably take a point. Obviously, next weekend now, it's FA Cup. It's Newport away and all attention turns to that where if someone's saying it's a free hit, I would like us to go for that game, me. Just go out there and have a go. We've got nothing to lose. If you want to experiment... So be it. But a cut run is very vital to this club. The funds, the publicity, as I said before, everything that comes with it. And it's a welcome distraction for the league as well. The next part is a shout out to my good friend, Steve Bailey, a lad who many years you'll probably see on the way days and be a long term friend. Just have a look at this next image. It seems a celebration. Yes, yeah, so wait, Rochdale, Steve's there celebrating Norwood's goal. Unfortunately, he's seen the upbreak in his metatarsal. So I just want to wish you a full speedy recovery, mate, and we look forward to seeing you back soon. But don't overdo it, take your time. We'd rather have you back in one piece, mate. A big thank you to the Oldham Athletic Disability Supporters Association. This was the shirt I won on, a, on Twitter when I um, replied to the tweet. I really never win anything in life, so I'm absolutely chuffed with that. It's a sign, last season's third kit signed shirt by this season's squad. I'm chuffed with it. But more importantly, this is a group 
it's trying to make match the experience better for people with disabilities. Now, I'm not going to lie, I suffer from rheumatoid arthritis. I'm also dyslexic as well, but not all disabilities are feasible. So it's good to have this group where they can liaise with the club, where they can put their ideas across, because we want the match the experience to be better for everyone, for all our fans, and we don't want fans missing out because we can't accommodate them. So if you, ever, if you have any worries, any concerns, give these guys a follow on Twitter, join them and talk. So I've already said I'm happy to get involved with them more. Hopefully, we'll hear more from them as the season goes on. I'm chuffed that all four of them made a pre-match um, prediction as well. Appreciate that and keep up the good work. And that's everything for this week's video. Obviously, as I said, next Saturday's FA Cup weekend, Cup Fever. So we've got no midweek game. So let's enjoy the week. Um, stay safe. Keep happy. Come on, Oldham. And I'll see you on the terraces.